Great. So it looks like we're live. I'm very excited to be talking with Laquisha Clemens uh, today, a financial therapist, which I, when I first met you and I heard financial therapist, I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> doesn't the world need this? Don't yes. I personally need this? <laughs> um, so, and we, um, you're a co-author of our book, Live Your Optimal Life. You wrote an awesome chapter in this book called I am in control of my money story. Yes. And so today we're talking about money stories. And specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about money and social work and mm -hmm. kind of debunking some of the myths. Um, and some of the I don't know, concepts that people have about yeah. social work and all of that. So first of all, I just like to hear from you, what does being a financial therapist mean? Can you share a little Oof. bit about what Yes, I love is? it. Um, so first, Liz, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm super excited to just talk on this subject all together. But a financial therapist really is somebody who knows they, they have a little bit of personal finance knowledge. So they understand things like debt to income ratios or building credit, budgeting, just a lot of the personal finance things, investing, um, things like that. And then they also understand the psychological behind it. So understanding how our mindset works when it comes to our, our money, um, understanding that sometimes we a lot of our decision making is usually emotional when it comes to to our money and actually a known fact is that it 90% of our decision making it, it for money is emotional so it's really being able to tie in these two uh i guess you could say competencies and bring bridging them to come together to understand like your money your personal finance but also understanding how our habits, our emotions, and our behaviors, how that also ties in and plays a role in what we do when it comes to our money. So mm -hmm. super interesting. <laughs> it's fascinating. And it's so true. And I love that you're, the way that you talk about this and work with people is acknowledging that instead of it's like, oh, this bad thing we have to feel bad about. It. It's like, no, it's, this is real, that they, this is how we're motivated. There's nothing wrong with that. How do we work exactly. with this? And um, so what, brought you to this field how did you discover this was there a, yeah. a money story you had yourself that yeah well what I love so first off even going back to uh, me writing that chapter in the book is I I really talked about myself in that book and how I came to to where I'm at today in this and being a financial therapist and I have my own money story, you know, at an early age in adulthood, 18, 19 years old, I entered a lot of credit card debt and which is honestly more common than what we think, because a lot of times we become these adults now we're 18 and we can, you know, sign up for a credit card and no one else has to, you know, co-sign for us. So it's exciting as a young adult but also you don't realize the troubles that it can bring and really how managing a credit card, knowing the interest rate, knowing like you're going to have to pay, pay this back and when to pay it back. There's just so many layers of steps when it comes to money management. Um, I was also getting into social work and I, me entering all this credit card debt, I needed to understand why I, I want you to know why this happened? Where did this come from? How did I get here? Which mm -hmm. is a common question for a lot of people usually is, how did I get here? Where, what do I have to show for all the amount of credit card debt that I'm in? And a lot of times you don't have much to, to show for it because you don't really know where your money's going. Right. So I wanted to, I wanted to understand the reasons behind it. And I started to just research. I went down like the Google rabbit hole of really trying to figure this out. And then I discovered Dr. Brad Klontz, who's a financial psychologist. He had actually done research studies around our money, our habits and our behaviors when it comes to our money. So here it is now, there's, re there's actual research out there 
of what we do and how we do them. And there were several different studies by the time I was, by the time I decided to, to look at them. And I said, wow, like, this is why I made poor decisions. And a lot of that had to do with my family and their background and just what was taught to me or what wasn't taught to me mm-hmm. because money really wasn't taught to me. It was just make sure you pay your bills, make sure you pay your bills on time. Right. Um, and uh, my mom also used money or should I say shopping as a way to cope with things. Mm. She would always be in the mall, always shopping. But and, and you know, as a kid, you don't re- you don't recognize what it is. But now as a therapist, as a social worker, I understand what it was. And she would use that. She would go to the mall to just shop and cope. And she actually racked up a, a lot of credit card debt herself. So I just thought it was normal. I just thought, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just supposed to do this. And once I understood that a lot of my habits and everything that I had to do really was psychological and really came from my understanding of growing up and then also me using it as a way of, of a coping mechanism, because that's what I learned was to just mm-hmm. go, you know, shop. It's going to make you feel better. And it does. It mm-hmm. makes you feel better for that second. Uh, mm-hmm. But sometimes you feel guilty after that second because you spent X amount of dollars. So there is that. And mm-hmm. me becoming a social worker, I've seen clients that they were having a lot of sh- money issues, a, mon- a lot of money struggles. And I said, how do we put this together? How can I get social work and personal finance to come together? Like, how mm-hmm. can I put this out there? <laughs> um, yeah. And eventually I learned of the Financial Therapy Association and the pandemic helped a lot with everybody being online because I was then able to network with other people Mm -hmm. that were doing this. And I said, this is what I've been wanting to do. So now I'm here and I got into it. (laughs) That's so perfect. And I'm just so present to the, you know, money is power. I mean, that money now is how we we function in society, right? And um, so there's so much that money could be used by certain people to have power over somebody else. Like it's such a dynamic in all of our relationships that we have just our partners, but our familial relationships or our relationships with our children, right? It's, yeah. There's so many layers, but a lot of times it's like viewed as this separate thing or something, or we have this idea of it's shameful to even talk about or bring up. Exactly. And it's such a part of our life, right? Exactly. So exactly. Mm. And even when you were talking about the debt, this thing happens to me where I physically feel like in my lower back, it's like, Ooh, a little ah, bit. Of, yes. Then, you know, mm-hmm. it's right. And I'm sure yep. you see that with, with your clients too. Absolutely. Right? It is so, so common, but that's, and that's honestly what I'm trying to do is take a lot of that shame, that judgment out of money and money conversations. And when and and even like the power dynamics and really recognizing like, hey, I feel bad. I don't like this feeling. Mm-hmm. What else? What is really going on with me? <laughs> do right. I really want to go spend some money? Is that going to do something for me? Or is there other things that I can do mm-hmm. that would be just as healthy and continue to to hit my, my money goals? Mm, that's perfect. And I wanted to talk to you also about uh, social work. And the way that this degree is used in society, I know it's, there's a kind of a feeling of, oh, you won't make money as a social worker or, you know, it's, oh, you, you got to be in it because of your heart and your, mm-hmm. which obviously is true, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. We're in it because we want to make the world a better place. We want to help people and all of that yeah. too, but they don't have to be separate, right? Exactly. They don't have, right. That you can't actually care for yourself and I'm passionate about this because of I've just seen so many people in the nonprofit field of just feeling like they yes. had to accept these low low wages and struggling and the need never ends that you know people get burned out and they're not able to provide always for their families in certain circumstances solely based on that. So yeah. I I love that you brought that up because I agree. I think that there's really a stigma around the social work where it's like you're not supposed to make money and I don't believe that at all and matter of fact I know that's not true <laughs> so I'll just say that right. I just know I know it's not true because um there are 
the social work degree or really any of the degrees in the mental health, the marriage family therapist, like just these multiple disciplines, you can do so much with them. They're so versatile that you don't necessarily have to go to a nonprofit and burn yourself out and think that you're mm -hmm. supposed to just be be a therapist. You don't have to just just be a therapist. You can become a macro social worker. You can get into politics if you if you wanted to. You can um, become a book publisher. Like right. <laughs> there, there's just yeah. so many different ways that you can utilize the degree. But then on top of that, you don't have to get a, a low wage um, mm -hmm. because we also still have to live. And that's very important is you still need to feel like you like I'm you got a degree I'm working and I still want to live my life and mm -hmm. however that may whatever that may look like and it comes back to really our money our goals for our money and our values how they align but you can live the life that that you want to live and be a social worker so I'm always telling people like there's so many different ways you can make the degree work for you and multiple streams of income that can come out of out of this degree like you can mm -hmm. create courses books um webinars like they're speaking like there's just so many things different things that you can do that can also generate different streams and it's not just therapy because I also think people get stuck on that as they think you know, you're supposed to kind of ride the wave of you, you get your master's degree and then you're, you go and you get licensed and then you're supposed to become a therapist, maybe open up a private practice, which if that's your, your goals and your dreams, that's awesome. But that's mm -hmm. not the only thing you, you can do. There's so many things you could do. Right. Like, and I love yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like, honestly, you're like a really great example of, of this because you have your master's in social work, um, but you are a book publisher. Like that is, that's a, amazing, you know, and it also makes a lot of sense because you, you work with people, you have the people skills, like you understand how to communicate with other, like you can do this work because you also now you have that background in, mm -hmm. in social work to understand this, but also you can publish books. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, and I use my social de work degree every single day, whether I'm working with, uh, you know, an author who is writing about their trauma, right. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a challenging thing they're writing about. I use it when I go to launch books because I do community organizations. I macro social work yeah. when I'm launching the books um, and all of this, right? It, there's from the gamut, all the things that I learned in social work, I use every single day in this way that is very creative, but it's still exactly. serving that purpose, right? It's still exactly. like, how are we helping um, you're still making oh, impact yeah exactly. and even you know I met this uh another social worker who she created or she co-created this uh app so she is in the mm. technology space where it was a social emotional learning app for the schools oh, so yeah. another she was like I'm still a social worker I still have my social worker cap but I use that to understand like how can I better help the children and in the schools with their social emotional learning, but also then put in technology because, you know, that's a big thing nowadays. Put mm -hmm. this into technology where the schools are benefiting, where multiple people are are benefiting from this application. So, again, like there's just so many different ways that you can you can like, utilize the, the degree. Mm. And so we're going to be working on a book collaboration together that is about this, right? How you yeah. all, how you can be a thriving therapist, a thriving social worker. Yeah. Um, can you share a little bit about yes. that? Yes. So I'm super excited about it. And honestly, like I got this thought in my head as someone who was coming up in social work as a beginner social worker where I just didn't know, I couldn't, I didn't know, I didn't know how to navigate it. I didn't know 
what else I could do. I got burned out in agency agency work and I didn't know what else I was able to do that continued to make an impact. And along with my ride, I was figuring out how to become a financial therapist. And I never thought I would be able to actually tell people or say to people, I want to be a financial therapist. If I go back in time <laughs> to some of my past colleagues from when I was in agency work being burnt out, I've I'm sure they'll remember me talking about how do I merge money and, and mental health? How do I do this? Because it it was a dream of mm. mine. And now I'm doing that. Now I'm living that. But I also do not think that if I had to step out on fair and I had to really, you know, push myself and have a lot of support around how do I how do I make this happen? What other things I can do where now I'm a published author and mm -hmm. um, actually in the works right now, I have a personal finance application that I'm that I'm working on. So I've done now multiple different things. I'm a speaker. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably the list goes on, but uh, it it's it's nice to know that I've been able to really be versatile on the different things that I can do and like thrive. So I wanted to do this book for those who are in coming up into the field or want to get into it and want to know how else can we navigate. So we'll have multiple different um, therapists, multiple different people that have gone through something and they're able to really talk about how did they navigate it. I know taking the the exam for a lot of people is a big one. It's a big accomplishment. It's it's amazing. But mm -hmm. sometimes when we fail it, we tend to fail, feel like we're failing ourselves. We tend mm -hmm. to feel bad, right? We tend to feel bad, like we aren't worthy. But then there are also a, a lot of people who they go through that and then they pass, maybe they pass on the second or third try or whatever that is. They pass and they didn't give up. There's some people who will give up on that. Mm. And I want people to understand, like, just don't don't give up on your dreams. Whatever that <laughs> is, don't give up on it. And note that like there's so many, so many different people that have gone through probably something similar. And you you can do it too. Like you can get through mm -hmm. this and you can get to that next, that next stop. And I love the idea of how you'll be sharing different stories of different people so that people can see what's out there, like what yes. opportunity, right? Like we yes. didn't, you didn't even know that financial therapy was a thing. I never mm -hmm. knew that was a thing before. And to be able to be sharing that kind of novel things or new emerging yeah. kind of disciplines that people could learn about and get into is really cool from people like actual people yeah. <laughs> that people could exactly um, follow the pathway of. So um, what, if somebody wants to talk with you um, and connect with you further, what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, I would say definitely go to my website, www.freedomlifetherapy.com. And you could also email me. Email is probably the uh, biggest way of definitely reaching reaching out to me, but that is just admin a d m i n at freedomlifetherapy dot com. Is there anything else you want our um, listeners to know today? Anything else um, you want to share? I am super excited about this, and if there are any other like therapists that really connected to today and and want to join in on on this anthology, there is still time to to join in. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited about this project, and I'm just happy that you had me here. Yes, thank you so much for taking the time. It was a pleasure as always to talk with you, Lucretia. Yes. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too.